Asalaamu Alaikum and welcome to the report with me, Yasmin Khatoun. On tonight's program, we'll be looking at the killing of an imam in Kenya and airstrikes in Libya. But first, defections from the ruling Sri Lankan government to the opposition complicated President Mahinda Rapakasa's campaign to be elected for a third term in office in next month's presidential elections. But complicating things further, the country's biggest Muslim party, the Sri Lankan Muslim Congress, has also left government. Asal Ahmed has more on this story. <laughs> In the biggest blow to President Mahinda Rajapaksa's bid for re-election next month, the largest Muslim political party, the Sri Lankan Muslim Congress, has defected and pushed its support behind the oppositional candidate, former Health Minister Maithri Pala Shurasena. Ralph Hakim, the leader of the party and also Justice Minister, resigned saying the split was over disagreements over a 2010 law, which the party also voted for, that lifted the two-term limit on the presidency. This also gave it claims Roger Pasco wide powers over the police, judiciary and the civil service. Another leader of the party, Amir Faiz, cited intolerance towards religious minorities and disagreements with his style of rule. The announcement will complicate President Roger Pasco's campaign for a third term in office in next month's election. The Muslim electorate make up the second largest minority in the island after Hindu Tamils, with many seeing them as kingmakers if the majority Sinhalese are split down the middle. There was no immediate comment from the government on the resignations, but a ruling party source said that the defection of the Muslim party was the biggest blow so far for the president. The defection comes amid an earlier resignation of Rishad Bathiuddin, the former industry and commerce minister, who accused the president of failing to restrain the radical Buddhist group, Boda Balasina, who are said to have been involved in anti-Muslim attacks recently. In one incident in June, a mob in the southern part of the country left three Muslims dead and dozens injured after a rally by the group. This raised fears amongst the Muslim community. The president's lack of political will so far to solve the issue has disillusioned both the Muslim electorate and some politicians. What impact this will have on the upcoming elections, which the president is forecast as favourite to win, still remains to be seen. Hafsal Ahmed, The Report. Joining me to discuss this, Amjad Salim, consultant in peace building and humanitarian issues, and Mohammed Marzouk, political commentator and former trade unionist. Mohammed, can I come to you first? How big a defection is this? What sort of impact will this have? Mohammed, can you hear me? Hello? Hi, yeah, can you hear me? What sort of an impact will this have? Impact of the, uh, 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 the Sri Muslim Congress leaving the government? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, in my view, the situation is this. Uh, it might have a, really it is a psychological impact on the president while he's seeking re-election. Uh, but when it comes from the uh, aspect of uh, Muslim voters, the community is concerned. Uh, they have long before, it's my view, that uh, majority of the moral majority have decided to support the opposition candidate. Uh, the uh, any Muslim party that is within the government or Muslim politicians uh, leaving the government, in my view, will not have any. Uh, it is quite irrelevant as far as the uh, voting pattern of the Muslim Muslims will be concerned. Will be. Amjad, Mohammed doesn't seem to think this is a hugely significant um, change, and that this and that a Muslim party leaving the government won't necessarily. Farewell. What do you think? What sort of impact do you think this will have? I mean, I think uh, I tend to agree that this is going to be more of a psychological impact. And to be honest, I think the SLMC were put between a rock and a hard place. I mean, they were under pressure from their constituents to make a significant statement on um, on the on the incumbent and the fact that you know there's been complicity in 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 the decline of, of rule of law. So I think they were under no illusions that they had to actually leave. I mean, they, but this came after a lot of discussions amongst themselves. They were quite split on, on the vote in terms of some wanting to stay, some wanting to leave. And so I think to some extent they were pushed into into responding. So it's more of a psychological element more, more than anything, because as, as Mohammed has been saying that I think the majority of the Muslim community have made up their minds that they would probably go with the opposition, which, to be honest, is also interesting because the opposition themselves haven't really come out with anything that is per se favorable 
for the minorities. But the situation in Sri Lanka at the moment is that it's clearly a case of wanting to get rid of the incumbent as opposed to who is coming in to replace him. So, you know, I think in this line of of work, the SLMC leaving proves more of a psychological um, aspect, but also they bring to the fore uh, a lot of grassroots or organizing power, which in the run-up to the final days of the election will be important in terms of mobilizing people to come out to vote, mobilizing people to, you know, in terms of the campaigns in the East. So that could play an, play an, an effect as such. And that's what they need to, to deliver, per se. I mean, that's the only reason why they would, you know, the opposition would, would want to have them on board is that they, would, they can bring this aspect of to, to the game. Amjad, there's an election in a month. How crucial is the minority vote? <laughs> Um, it is it is crucial. I mean, in, in, in the sense that this is probably the first time in about twenty years that you know you really have uh, game on in terms of of an election where you have uh, an incumbent that is being s severely tested, and it is the minority uh, vote, not exclusively, but they will play an important part. Both the Tamil, uh, the Muslim uh, votes will will be important because particularly in places like the North and East where they are a majority, you know they will they will have a significant impact. So, you know, it is, it is, it is important that they're part of this. It's important that the, that the majority community is also split on this. So it's, it's no longer, uh, it's no longer seen as campaign, as a, an election that is um, consolidating a majoritarian viewpoint because the majority is split. So it is more about now looking really at issues that are supposed to, be discussed in an election with us to, to do good governance, accountability, corruption. And so I, I think this is where you, you do have an interesting space for a democratic dialogue to take place. Mohammed, can I bring you back into the discussion now with our anti-Muslim incidents in, in June? And some are saying that this has got to do with what's happened now. Is there any link to what's taken place? Mohammed, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah. Can you repeat? Say it again, please. Uh... Is there a link between the handling of the president of, of, of his case, the anti-Muslim incidents in June, to what's taking place now? Uh, well, well, it's not what you say. It's not clear. I don't know. Uh, can you can you can you say it again, uh, a bit slower? Is there a link between the president's handling of anti-Islamic incidents uh, earlier this year to what's taking place uh, now? Well, well uh, uh, you are you are referring to the uh, incidents uh, concerning the Muslims, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it is uh, it is the responsibility of their government to see that the their citizens are safeguarded from unruly elements. Uh, in the in, in the circumstances over the last three years now, there was escalation uh, in the down south and Nalukgam and Birbal area a few months back. Now, uh, up to that time, whatever the incidents that were taking place or the or the, or the problems caused by these unruly elements led by the Baudda Balat Sena, the government was not using the, uh, what you call, authority in their hands. Uh, normally, the uh, rule of law did not prevail uh, to safeguard the Muslims. They just allowed things to go, and they were giving, uh, the government was giving just uh, uh, excuses. So that caused a lot of dissatisfaction among the Muslims. Amjad, can I bring you back in? Your thoughts? I think definitely, you know, the the fact that the, a large part of the majority of the Muslim public is probably going to vote with the opposition is is mainly swayed by what has happened uh, in June and what has been happening over the last year and a half, where there has been a rise in in violence and rhetoric, uh, anti-Muslim violence and, and and rhetoric, with many believing that, you know, the the government uh, is com complicit in this. Now, of course, uh, this is different to how the political actors have, have worked on this. Um, and, you know, it's interesting that it's only now the, the, the Muslim politicians who were in the government in the last six months ago when, when, when the violence took place and were quite, quite vociferous in, in their, um, you know, in sort of complaining against the violence, but it's only now that they're choosing to walk out of the government. So, you know, I don't think necessarily that the that the ministers leaving the government at this particular point uh, is necessarily swayed by what happened 
with the violence, but I think it's mainly due to the fact that the constituents, you know, they're under pressure from, from, from the constituents because these guys should have left a while back. I mean, if there was violence and if, you know, if it was as, as has been alleged that it was at least the government did not play a role in, 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 in sort of containing it and, and, and bringing to justice those who, p who perpetrated it. I mean, the, they should have been in a position to have left a long time ago. So I think the, the the current strategy of the Muslim politicians is more of a political pragmatism you know, as they see it in order to kind of jump on what they think is perhaps a much more of a winning ticket. But um, the Muslim sentiment on a whole definitely has been swayed by what has happened over the last 18 months or so. Amjad, can you tell us a bit about the um, Bodu Bella Sena and, and how they've impacted the Muslim population in Sri Lanka for some of our viewers who may just be hearing about this? Well, yeah, I mean, the the, the Balasena is a radical Buddhist group that has emerged really out of nowhere over the last two years, um, claiming to to work on what has been traditionally what they call a singular Buddhist uh, he hegemonic notion that Sri Lanka belongs to uh, and Sri Lanka and the, the the rulers of Sri Lanka are the guardians and preservers of of, of Buddhism and Buddhism is intertwined with with with, with singular nationalism and the, basically those who are not singular Singhalese Buddhists are effectively hosts are guests basically in a country where they're the host. So they have come really uh, sort of push, putting this this rhetoric and largely again very similar to what we see and the 969 movement based in, in Myanmar, um, very similar kind of rhetoric in terms of, of pushing this hegemonic uh, agenda. And over the last 18 months, they've been working against the, the Christians and then uh, a very targeted approach towards the Muslim community, who, um, largely looking at what they felt was an Islamification of of Sri Lanka due to the dress code, due to, uh, you know, um, Islamic banks, due to the mosques, everything else. So they've really stepped on this agenda for for trying to um, bring back what they call the singular nationalist uh, aspect. And this is where there, there is this kind of link towards maybe, uh, you know, addressing a, 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 a voter base that will appeal, that will be appealed to, to, to these type of, of, of narratives. And what's been done by the current government to, to tackle their eyes? Well, to, to be honest, not not much has been done. I mean, you know, uh, it's been interesting to note that basically, you know, f f people who with who've done far less worse things than Botubala Sena in terms, and said far less worse things than Botubala Sena have actually been arrested and you know for and and or held in Comicado for for a long period. So actually, the 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 feeling is, and you know, there's and all of this is is based on speculation and everything else. But because that there's they are able to operate with such impunity that ba basically there's a feeling that the the government is complicit in in this um, is uh, you know then they have not been brought to task for some of the hate speech, some of the perpetration of violence. They're allowed to. To, to to roam around, they're allowed to have their their, their bodyguards. Um, you know, uh, they're allowed to kind of uh, have uh, this Buddhist monk from 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 Burma, who you know it was named by Time Magazine as the face of of evil, was allowed to come into to to Sri Lanka a few months ago, um, given a visa. So, because of all of these things, you know, the, the finger. And you know, in Sri Lanka, nothing really operates without uh, without the approval of, of the top level. So, there, it, it all points to this 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 complicity, and that is why I think the Muslim community is fairly um, fairly adamant that they will not vote for, uh, or they will they're not willing to to vote for someone they they, they think is directly responsible for, if not stopping the violence, in actually encouraging the violence. Thank you, Brother Amjad. Um, Brother Mohammed, can I bring you back in? How big a players are the Tamil National Alliance in the forthcoming elections? What sort of impact can, can they have? Uh, so, uh, you are asking regarding the uh, sort of opposition alliance, isn't it? Coalition. The, the, it? the Tamil National Alliance, yes. 
Tamil, uh, well, well, uh, so far there is no news that I have come across that the Tamil National Alliance has made a decision uh, what they should do, what the Tamils should do, or they give a message to the Tamil community uh, which way to go in the elections. Uh, uh, but uh, I don't know whether the Tamil National Alliance is in a position to come and directly tell the people uh, they are a community vote for uh, the current incumbent president or the opposition candidate, uh, because uh, if, if they commit directly uh, saying, okay, go for the opposition, it can be used by the government saying that uh, the Tamil National Alliance or the opposition coalition, uh, the Maitri Pala, the, the opposition candidate, is colliding or, or, or sort of uh, collaborating with the Tamil National Alliance uh, for a division of the country, and they could, the, 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 the uh, pro-president uh, uh, campaign could go turn in that direction. So I wonder whether the Tamil National Alliance will take a decision on that. Uh, most probably they might uh, sort of tell the people, Tamil people, go and vote for your candidate who may according to your conscience. That may be the line that they will take. Thank you. Uh, they are in, in a very crucial situation than the Muslims. Muslims can decide this way or that way, uh, and the Muslim parties can decide. But when it comes to them, they are in a very, 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 uh, what do you call, difficult situation to give a specific direction to the Tamils, to which way they go. Okay, on that note, we are going to have to um, wrap up this conversation, although we will continue um, in part two or with the rest of today's news. See you after the break.